sharp tool is a safe tool. By being sharp, it does its job more efficiently, therefore, more safely. Safety and efficiency go hand in hand. Sharp as a razor. That's an appropriate title for this training session on cutting tools. Cutting tools are many and varied. They include axes, brush hooks, Pulaski's, bolo knives, pruning shears, and lopping shears. Many power tools as well. We won't concern ourselves with those right now. That'll come later. But I'm going to talk about the axe, the brush hook, and the Pulaski. And most everything I tell you about these three tools will apply to all the others as well. There are fools of say repeat them now. Be sure to test the handle for defects. Handle two for straightness. And make sure that the head is on tight. Check the handle for splinters. Test the tool for a sharp cutting edge. Sharp tools mean more fire line built a lot easier and earlier control of the fire. When you're carrying a sharp cutting tool, Remember the possibility of slipping or stumbling. Carry an axe like this, with a firm grip at the balance point and the head down. The sharp cutting edges facing the front and rear in this manner present the least danger of cutting you if you should slip or stumble. Now let's talk about the right way, the safe way to use these tools. Wait a minute. Hold it. You're new at this. We don't want to lose a promising trainee. Let me show you what you are about to do. When you handle a cutting tool like this, you've got to think about safety. First, last, and always. That means checking your clearance before you start to swing. Look at that overhanging limb. It's almost a sure bet that when you started your downswing, the axe head would have been at least deflected or maybe tangled by that branch. That could have caused several things to happen. If you didn't have a pretty firm grip on the handle, the whole tool could have flown right out of your hands to land Lord only knows where. The second thing you were doing wrong, you were standing with your feet too close together. Make sure your feet are far apart and firmly planted on the ground. Another thing, use as little muscle power as possible on the backswing. Save it for the downswing. But the worst thing you were doing wrong was cutting directly toward your body. Suppose the ax had glanced off the limb or missed it entirely. Look what might have happened. Gee, I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad I stopped you before you had something to be really sorry about. All right, let's see if you've learned anything. Incidentally, here's the proper way to pass a tool to another man. Yeah, I remember. Always pass a tool to a man so that he can take it without touching the cutting edges and in such a way as to avoid cutting your own hand. Well, by golly, I'm proud of you. Now, what's the best rule for a man to follow when he's inexperienced in using a tool? Never do anything until you know how to do it. Right. And the best way to learn how to do it is to watch somebody that knows how. Hi, men. Shall we go to work? Let's talk about the tools you're going to use. Dan's going to work with a double bit axe like the one I've just been talking about. There are many models of both the single bit and the double bit axe. However, the double bit axe is preferred by most firefighters. Tom's going to use a brush hook. It's very similar to an axe. However, the cutting edge is protected by the hook or point which protects the sharp edge even when cutting close to the ground in rocky soil. Jim's going to use a Pulaski. The Pulaski was designed as a combination tool for grubbing or trenching in duff, matted vines, slash, or light brush. It's also handy for chopping. Well, I see that Dan is ready to go to work. Let's see how an experienced man uses a double bit axe safely and efficiently. Cut at about a 45 degree angle to prevent the tool from bouncing back or glancing from the tree. Cut near the base, but avoid rocks. 
Another advantage of the double bit axe is that we can keep one edge sharp for clear cutting and use the other closer to the ground if necessary. When using the axe for trimming, cut toward the tree or brush with light strokes, keeping control of the axe. That will give you an idea of the basic use of the axe. The felling of large trees is an art that we will cover in a later lesson. Now let's talk about the brush hook. Remember what I said about the hook or the point protecting the blade even when it's cutting close to the ground? Let's watch Tom in action. In brush, a slanting pull stroke is often advisable. Tom is utilizing that technique right now and you can see the results. While it's true that a brush hook is designed to protect the cutting edge, even in rocky soil, an experienced man is still careful not to allow the point to hit on rocks or solid objects. Many a man has found that such an accident can result in a bitter stinging in the hand, or even as much as a broken handle. Yes, the brush hook is like an axe, but a lot more effective when cutting brush in young trees. What are you doing with a shovel? This training session's on cutting tools. I heard you say something about trenching. I already know how to do that with a shovel. You heard me mention Pulaski. Trenching, grubbing, and chopping. Yeah, I knew you said trenching. I also said grubbing and chopping. I guess you did. Well, I'll get rid of the shovel. Wait a minute. As long as you've got it, let's see if you still know how to use it. The Pulaski was specially designed with trenching as one of its combination uses. Trenching on hillsides, as you know, is necessary in order to keep rolling hot material out of lower, unburned ground cover. When the ground is hard, too hard for a shovel alone, the Pulaski is a mighty helpful tool. Here's an example of how two hand tools can be combined for more efficiency under certain circumstances. When using the mattock end of a Pulaski for grubbing or trenching, avoid hitting rocks as much as possible, which will tend to dull the blade. However, there is a much more important reason. Hitting a rock can cause the blade to glance off with dire results. When a rock has to be moved out of the way, pry it out carefully, using the tool much in the same manner as you would a pry bar. While not primarily designed for it, in an emergency, cutting tools can be used for scraping litter and duff. When using a Pulaski for such scraping work, naturally the tool should be handled in such a way that every precaution is taken against dulling the sharp cutting edge. All cutting tools can come in mighty handy in pulling away hot stuff from the fire line. And while we're talking about hot stuff, remember to throw anything that has had fire on it back into the burned area, and material untouched by flames should be thrown outside the fire line. When cutting in heavy fuels, it is often necessary for men to team up in the work by one man laying aside his tool and acting as a swamper for the other. An experienced man remembers that it's dangerous to work until exhausted. Periodic breathers must be taken. They needn't be long, just to straighten up and stretch muscle is enough for most men. There's another way to make the work easier. Switch jobs with another man. This will give you relief, 
because you'll be putting to work the muscles you haven't been using fully and giving a rest to the ones you have been using. Two men in such a team can accomplish more than three or four men cutting and then stopping to throw the material away from the line. Ready, Marge? Yes, sir. I've asked Marge to step out of the office for a moment to help me demonstrate a very important point of safety. Okay, Marge, let's see how good you are. Now, can you see any similarity between what Marge just did and what this man is doing? Well, that's not too hard. I play a little golf myself. One of the first rules in golf is to always keep your eye on the ball. I guess in our case here, it would, it would be keep your eye on the point of impact. You think that's right? I think that's right. It is right. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Marge. You can get back to those property records now. I don't think I have to further emphasize the importance of keeping your eye on the point of impact. That's a good rule to learn. I think I'd better review a few other important rules. In order to do the job, a cutting tool must be sharp. That means it's dangerous. So, use cutting tools with care. Be alert. Avoid injury to yourself and others around you. Don't hit into rocks. It not only will dull the blade, but a glancing tool can cripple a man. Don't waste your energy. Make every lick count. Now there are a few important things that should be covered about the storage of hand tools. Before any hand tool is stored, it should be given a thorough maintenance check. First, naturally, it should be cleaned up and checked for cracked handles and loose blades. Some sharpening is needed if the tool has been in use. A single cut mill file or an axe stone will put on a good cutting edge. The file should have a handle on it to avoid cutting the hand if a slip is made. The handle acts as a guard. Larger warehouses may have power grinders available. When these are used, care should be taken to avoid getting tools too hot. This takes the temper out of a cutting blade. However, whether it's a power grinder or a single cut mill file, cutting edges should be properly ground and tapered back it's important to prevent having too much arc on the cutting edge. By all means, use a little rust preventative. This will keep the blade in good condition while it's stored. A rusty cutting tool can be a dull cutting tool. When the tools are finally ready to be stored, they may be hung in racks to keep the handles from warping or placed in special boxes, which help protect the blades and make them easily transportable. Well, those are the basic rules of safety for the safe using of the all-important cutting tool. At the risk of being repetitious, I'm going to remind you again that when a tool is supposed to cut, it must be sharp. And when it's sharp, it's dangerous. But the most important thing to remember is that there's just one person responsible for your safety, and that's you.